Dear students, good day. We will study environment policy. Introduction. India though has a long way to go to attain environmental quality akin to those enjoyed in developed economies. It has made one of the fastest progress in the world in addressing its ecological issues and improving its environmental quality between 1995 through 2010. In the wake of World Environmental Day on June 5, once again Indian environmental policy was praised by many in the light of above progress report. While the present policy is unique in the sense as discussed in the later part of this lecture, there are some setbacks which hinder the expected pace of improvement. The primary aim of India's environmental policy is akin with other country that is to prevent the degradation of the environment. It is not limited to air, water and soil pollution. Rather, it covers all forms of pollution including soil contamination, solid waste pollution, light pollution, littering, thermal pollution and radioactive contamination etc. This is expressly written in black and white letter and is evident from Environmental Protection Act herein after referred as EP Act 1986. The EP Act defines pollution under section 2K as the presence in the environment of any environmental pollutant and under section 2B Pollutant is defined as any solid, liquid or gaseous substances present in such concentration as may tend to be injurious to the environment. Hence, in simple terms, pollution is the contamination of the environment which has an adverse impact on life in all forms. This widened the area of operation of EP Act. Under EP Act, Environmental enforcement powers is delegated to the states to make it more powerful. In addition to this, our constitution is also unique in the sense that it contains specific provisions for the protection of environment. It is expressly mentioned that the state and the citizens are legally obliged to protect the environment. Some of these provisions are Article 48A which deals with protection and improvement of environment and safeguarding of forests and wildlife. Article 51A G states that it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. Now, let us talk about the emergence of environmental policy. In the early 1970s, the environmental feasibility of economic growth became an issue of governmental concern in its own right for the first time in India. The impetus came from the 1972 United Nations Conference on Human Environment in Stockholm. This reflected the international trend. Before, there had been environmentally relevant disputes, for instance, over the use of water or forests. In the case of India, such historical developments have recently been of academic interest. However, it was only when the very survival of humankind was perceived to be threatened because of ecological degradation that environmental policies and bureaucracies began to emerge on national and international levels. The Stockholm conference was of lasting impact in this sense. Further, let us learn what is national environmental policy and its insinuation. National environmental policy 2006 is one of the chief drafts concerning environmental policy of India. It encourages imposing of more stringent local level water and air quality standards for receptors. The objective of the national environment policy includes conservation of critical environmental resources, 
intra generational equity livelihood security for the poor inter generational equity integration of environmental concerns in economic and social development efficiency in environmental resource use and enhancement of resources for environmental conservation unfortunately it is contested that the objectives of inter and intra generational equity and livelihood security for the poor and conservation of critical environmental resources cannot coexist with principles that are highly homocentric and seek economic efficiency some even conceive that the national environmental policy abbreviated as nep 2006 has strangely made itself more meaningful to the industrial sector attempting to protect it instead of the environment there are some merits in these arguments and time will show how much we are able to reap the fruit of current environmental policies environmental policy and judiciary in india the issues and policies related to environment has undergone a swift change over a period of time the primary agency for bringing such change is judiciary unlike other countries where legislature and executives are at the helms of affairs in order to plan implement and take in hand environmental issues the apex court has laid down new principles to protect the environment reinterpreted environmental laws created new institutions and structures and conferred additional powers on the existing ones through a series of directions and judgments as a result of increase in public sentiment towards environment several public interest litigation abbreviated as pil turned into a historical judgment proponents claim that the supreme court abbreviated as sc has through intense judicial activism become a symbol of hope for the people of india while judicial activism was appreciated by some there are other groups which suggest that excess of judicial activism resulted in a weapon for limiting development even after a stay related to an infrastructure project is vacated or a court order gives a green light to certain project new issues become grounds for court notices and new public interest litigation environment and politics in india the widespread assumption that the environment is of concern for advanced societies but not for developing countries is wrong This is evident in South Asia. According to Anil Agarwal in 1994, the environment is an idea whose time has come in India. For more than two decades, there has been a lively environmental debate along with a high degree of legislative activity in India. Of course, this intensified as a consequence of the Bhopal gas leak in 1984. which led to the environment protection act of 1986 however there is vast agreement that the results of various reforms and regulations have been disappointing implementation has been poor india's course of development is most likely unsustainable its current development strategy is therefore increasingly disputed along lines of ecological considerations According to a World Bank analysis, the total cost of environmental damages in 1992 amounted to 9.7 billion US dollars in India. This was the equivalent of 4.5% of GDP. The comparative figures for China and Mexico were 2.6 and 3.3% of GDP. In industrialized nations the annual environmental damage was estimated at 1 to 2%. Anil Agarwal in 1996 considered the World Bank data for India to be underestimated as they did not account for the loss of biodiversity, health costs due to hazardous waste and deforestation impacts other than timber depletion. Air and water pollution 
and lack of sanitation, garbage and sewage disposal and other basic urban services severely hamper the development of Indian cities. The prime ecological worries in India's rural areas are soil erosion, deforestation, water pollution and the scarcity of safe drinking water. In the cities, up to one third of household wastes are never collected by municipal services. The situation is particularly bad in slums, which house at least one fifth of India's urban population. Up to three quarters of Indian city dwellers lack sanitation. Overall, India's environmental situation is in bleak. J. Mohan Rao in 1995 claimed that 60% of agricultural land is degraded to varying degrees. Semi-arid and fragile soils have been brought under the plough. Water logging, erosion, salinization and overgrazing add to the depletion. While the government targets one third of the nation's land to be covered by forest, the ratio had dropped below 20% by the late 1980s. 70% of surface waters are seriously polluted. 80% of the populations do not have permanent access to safe drinking water. Such data prove that India needs effective environmental policies. Indeed, the issue has been of political concern since the early 1970s. Section 4.2 scrutinizes deficiencies in implementation. The failure of environmental policies has triggered opposition and social movements in India. Section 4.3 The last section of this chapter reconsiders this phenomena in the case of the Calcutta agglomeration. The emphasis will not so much be on the physical reality of India's environment as it would be in an engineering context. As this is an effort in sociology, the focus will be on academic assessments of environmental initiatives and even more on governmental and semi-governmental reports that are normally expected to serve as guidelines for state action. Recent episodes suggest changing trend. Recently, the environmental policy in India has undergone a drastic change as a result of increasing arm of the United Nations and allied bodies and emergence of new laws. The controversy on BT Brinjal also added fuel to the fire. Snapshots of events depicting current environmental policy. The Green Action for National Dandy Heritage Initiative abbreviated as Gandhi Memorial Project was inaugurated in July 2010 to commemorate the 80th year of Dandi March. This rupees 25 crore project is aimed at promoting Mahatma Gandhi's vision for sustainable development in Dandi and its surrounding villages. The Office of the Society of Integrated Coastal Management abbreviated as SICOM was inaugurated in September. This will be the nodal agency for the Integrated Coastal Zone Management Project abbreviated as ICZM being implemented by the GOI. Refusal to give clearance to Vedanta as it ignored the protection that scheduled tribes enjoy under Schedule 5 of the Constitution, Forest Conservation Act, the scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers, Recognition of Forest Rights Act and EP Act. This was truly a momentous decision in the history of India's environment litigation. Release of the National Action Plan on Climate Change, abbreviated as NAPCC, on 30th June 2008. The plan proposes to start eight missions promoting deployment, innovation and basic research in renewable energy technologies. In alignment, the Union Budget 2010-2011 announced the setting up of National Clean Energy Fund abbreviated as NCEF for funding R&D in clean technologies. Objectives of Environmental Policy 
The principal objectives of this policy are enumerated here. These objectives relate to current perceptions of key environmental challenges. They may accordingly evolve over time. Conservation of critical environmental resources. To protect and conserve critical ecological systems and resources and invaluable natural and man-made heritage which are essential for life support, livelihoods, economic growth and a broad conception of human well-being. Intragenerational equity livelihood security for the poor. To ensure equitable access to environmental resources and quality for all sections of society and in particular to ensure that poor communities which are most dependent on environmental resources for their livelihoods are assured secure access to these resources. Intergenerational equity to ensure judicious use of environmental resources to meet the needs and aspirations of the present and future generations. Integration of environmental concerns in economic and social development. To integrate environmental concerns into policies, plans, programs and projects for economic and social development. Efficiency in environmental resource use. To ensure efficient use of environmental resources in the sense of reduction in their use per unit of economic output to minimize adverse environmental impacts. Environmental governance to apply the principles of good governance that is transparency, rationality, accountability, reduction in time and costs, participation and regulatory independence to the management and regulation of use of environmental resources. Enhancement of resources for environmental conservation to ensure higher resource flows comprising finance, technology, management skills, traditional knowledge and social capital for environmental conservation through mutually beneficial multi-stakeholder partnerships between local communities, public agencies, the academic and research community, investors and multilateral and bilateral development partners two environment tribunals and their shortcomings. The National Green Tribunal Act 2010 was enacted to provide a forum for efficient and expeditious disposal of cases arising from any calamity occurring while handling any dangerous substance. The Act seeks to replace the National Environment Tribunal Act 1995 and the National Environment Appellate Authority Act 1997 which have been in operation for some time in the country. National Environment Tribunal Act 1995 was enacted to provide strict liability for damages arising out of any accident occurring while handling any hazardous substance and for the establishment of the tribunal for effective and expeditious disposal of cases arising from such accidents with a view to give relief and compensation for damages to person, property and the environment and for matters connected therewith or incidental thereto. The tribunal has not been constituted since last 10 years. Another important shortcoming is that the tribunal can only award compensation. If it is given all the powers of civil courts, then why can't grant injunctions, declarations, etc. In addition to this, the scheme does not also grant setting up tribunal in each state. National Environmental Appellate Authority Act 1997 was intended to provide the establishment of a National Environment Appellate Authority to hear appeals with respect to restriction of areas in which any industries, operation or process shall be carried out or shall not be carried out subject to safeguards under the EP Act 1986. After the term of first chairman was over, no chairman is appointed till now. Thus, we see that National Environment Tribunal never came into existence 
and National Environmental Appellate Authority Act came into existence, but after the term of first chairman got over, none came in. Thus, these two tribunals are non-functional regrettably. It is with regard to this only that a new environment court was proposed who could exercise all the powers of civil court, appellate power as well as original jurisdiction of civil court. Importance of environmental policy There is an overwhelming amount of news coverage related to the state of the economy, international politics and various domestic programs. The environment and environmental policy on the other hand are being ignored. When environmental policy is discussed, many citizens and representatives champion the need for substantial policy reform. However, when actual policies are introduced, they are typically ignored or delayed. Due to the current state of the environment, politicians need to place a higher priority on environmental policy. First, the public needs to understand exactly what environmental policy is and how it affects them. Environmental policy is defined as any action deliberately taken to manage human activities with a view to prevent, reduce or mitigate harmful effects on nature and natural resources and ensuring that man-made changes to the environment do not have harmful effects on humans or the environment. It generally covers air and water pollution, waste management, ecosystem management, biodiversity protection and the protection of natural resources, wildlife and endangered species. Issues like these affect everyone across the globe and cannot be ignored. Environmental policy became a national issue under Theodore Roosevelt when national parks were established in hopes of preserving wildlife for future generations. The modern environmental movement began in the 1970s during the Nixon administration when a large amount of environmental legislation started rolling out. Nixon signed the National Environment Policy Act abbreviated as NEPA which established a national policy promoting the enhancement of the environment and set requirements for all government agencies to prepare environmental assessments and environmental impact statements. Nixon also established the President's Council on Environmental Quality. Legislation of the time established the Environmental Protection Agency that is EPA, the Clean Air Act and the Federal Water Pollution Control Act. The EPA has received a lot of notoriety recently, mostly for Republicans desire to get rid of it, though it is still a source vital to protect the environment. Rising gas prices in the 1970s inspired a wave of greener vehicles, a phenomenon witnessed again in 2008. High energy costs motivated Jimmy Carter to install solar panels on the White House roof, a clear message that help the environment was everyone's responsibility. Focus on environmental policy began dwindling in the 1980s though under the Reagan administration. As the Soviet Union began to weaken and fall, the restructuring of Europe became a priority and the environment quickly slipped to the back burner. Many of the environmental issues that the public faced in the late 20th century are still issues today including climate change, lack of fossil fuels, sustainable energy solutions, ozone depletion and resource depletion. Today with the plethora of issues currently affecting the environment, it needs to become a priority again. As gas prices reached record highs in 2007 and 2008, there was a surge in green startups to help companies struggling with high fuel costs. As fuel costs decreased, the focus on these green startups decreased as well. However, now that gas prices are again on the rise, 
there will likely be a green resurgence in the market. These green initiatives should not rise and fall with the cost of gas. Environmental issues have impacts and implications far greater than the bottom dollar. Rising sea levels, droughts and other extreme weather events have enormous human impacts killing or displacing scores of people each year. In an Oxfam international study at the University of Belgium, the earth is currently experiencing approximately 500 natural disasters a year affecting over 250 million people. It is paramount that our government focuses significant attention and funding on environmental policy. If we continue to disregard the environment, the planet might be degraded to the point where it is no longer habitable. We only have one earth, we need to do our best to preserve it. Lastly, let us discuss benefits of environmental policies. The environment has been a significant concern for many years now, with these concerns translating into legal responsibilities for your business. In fact, some local laws are based on international laws and agreements. We all have a responsibility to minimize the impact our business has on the environment. But what are the benefits of doing so? Improved energy efficiency equals reduced costs. You should be aware of the climate change levy which is a tax on the use of energy in industry, commerce and the public sector applied before wet is calculated. This does not apply to very small firms but even so reduction in energy use will save your money. Reduction of waste also reduces costs. There is a charge to businesses for disposing of their waste. For example, it currently costs around 18 pound per ton to dispose of waste at landfill sites. You may look to reduce the amount of waste you produce by making your processes more efficient, which could save your time and reduce the amount of raw materials you need. You might even find someone who can use your waste as a raw material. There are tax incentives for businesses that buy and use energy and water efficient technologies or low emission vehicles. Legal compliance ensures that you won't get prosecuted for breaking the law or sued for negligence. You may be able to reduce your insurance costs by ensuring that you have good environmental practices in place as these practices may serve to create a safer workplace. Presenting yourself as an environmental friendly business may help you to win customers and Having an environmental policy in place might even be a prerequisite before bidding for certain contracts. Finally, feel good about yourself. You are playing your part in a global movement and helping to protect the environment. Let us summarize the topic. India does not have lack of environmental policy, but proper implementation is not there. In the current scenario, it becomes essential that the Indian authorities should strive to achieve a society where ideas and reality, legislation and implementation correlate. When the authorities manage to fulfill their role, it enables corporations to better contribute to the society in a positive way. In the wake of recent damages, concerned authorities have started giving more attention towards environment. But what we need is to find out newer ways to deal with old problems. Without active involvement of common people, it is indeed difficult for the authorities to devise and implement proper environment policy. Hence, individuals' initiatives are of paramount importance. What we need is adjustment and not deep-seated change. Thank you.